Um, so today uh, I'm explaining how my light monitor board works. Um, it's a little bit different than the standard one, and I'm actually making one right now for a friend of mine. Uh, you may know him, NS9987. His name is Matt. He has the blue Bluebird bus. Um, this is the same circuit board that's in my Mazda 626, and it's also the same board that is hanging up uh, on the bulkhead above my windshield in my in my bus. So here's how it works, how we do things. First off, you need uh, an, an old monitor board. This is the face plate. This is all we'll be using from it. Here's the uh, circuit board from it. It's held on with these little metal uh, nuts that turn on. We'll be reusing three of them. Um, so the way it works is you run a positive and a negative wire to this board and then these red things right here are called thermistors. And what they do is they have power running through them, or when they have power running through them, this red coil right here lights the LED. I think that's how it works. It could be vice versa. Anyway, that's how you, it tells if there's a light bulb or out or not because it works with the ground. So the supplies we're going to need to build my version of the board, two white uh, LEDs for the reverse lights. There's the part number. They're five millimeter. All the LEDs are five millimeter LEDs. Um, you need one package of those. You need one of these, which is, uh, no, I'm sorry, you need two of these. This is, um, that's the part number. Boy, that's a terrible part number. You use one of the open ones. This is the uh, part number, 276-1622. It has 20 assorted LEDs in it. And what we use out of it, it has an assortment of sizes and colors, red, yellow, green, and a couple clear lens ones, which I'm not sure, but it has four red 5mm and four yellow 5mm. So we're going to use, we need two packages of those. Um, and then you need three to four packages of 330 ohm uh, half watt resistors, which are the bigger resistors. They have a quarter watt one, which is a little bit smaller, but you want the half watt ones. So it comes with five. There's 16 lamps, so you need four of these. Uh, okay. I'm going to leave this one out anyways. And then the board you use is this board right here. Um, is there a part number somewhere on it? Must be on the back. Uh, yeah, 276. Alright, really? Come on. 276-0168. It's a just a general purpose printed circuit board. And as you can see, I'm going to use the LED here for pointing. You have two of these combined rows. The ones, uh, so they don't actually join. I do join them up. I use those rows. I join the two together in various places, usually once or twice. Actually, more than twice. So you get less resistance. But I join them together just with a snip piece of LED or uh, uh, resistor. And that becomes my negative, my common. And then I pick these clusters, these tri-clusters, to wire in my LEDs and resistors. Basically the way it works, so you have one LED. Let's lay it down where we can see it. Okay. The anode is the longer lead, which is positive, and the cathode is the shorter lead, which is negative. And I don't think I have any more LEDs out. I think I just used the last one on the board, so we'll open up another one. And uh, give me one second here. I'm going to open this package of resistors. I think I said LED, but I meant resistors. So, let me just pull them out here. That click was my driveway lights coming on. Alright, so basically, the way I wire this together, the general idea, let me pull a resistor out. So that anode, which is the long lead, gets a resistor attached in the same circuit to it. Positive end of, of your power, your 12 volts, comes to the end of the resistor. The negative end 
go straight to the negative on the uh, vehicle you're wiring this to. So basically this uh, resistor brings the 12 volts down to what the LED can run on which is I believe like a, a couple of volts like three. So and I've already started making a board here and the way I'm doing this is um, uh, so let's see here so that's our brake lights right there and those two resistors come together right here and then the third hole there is going to be used for the input wire um, so the way these LEDs work is uh, I also have the loading lights wired so they'll run just like they would on this particular board where these two reds are on at the same time, these two ambers are on at the same time, and so forth, instead of crisscrossed. If I was doing one of the older boards, then I would do that. I haven't actually done one yet. So, the way I do this is I just run, take my LED, and I'm going to stick it through the hole. I try to do on the inside lights, I do the uh, anode on the outside, I'm sorry, on the inside, and the cathode on the outside. So we're going to stick it through just like that. So there's, you can see the holes on the inside. That's a little crooked. Let's do it. I don't like crooked. I like these to look nice. There we go. Now let's see how we did on the back side. And perfect. Let's see here. Finger. There we go. There's the anode. I'm sorry, the cathode. And there's the anode. Almost perfect. I'm going to bring, I think that'll work. I'm going to bring this cathode up one though and see if we can't do it. And I'll solder those in and then either, and probably on this side of the anode here, I'll hook in my resistor from the other side, but we'll do it on this side for demonstration purposes. Like so. Let's see where it's hooked in there. And then uh, just solder them together. I put the resistor on one of these other tries, and since this LED is lighting up by itself, since it's a turn signal, um, uh, I won't have to worry about any of the, uh, <coughs> excuse me, any of the, uh, uh, any space issues with having to combine two, like I do with these center ones. I tried to do all my, my centrally located LEDs like the amber loading lights and the brake lights and tail lights and reverse lights towards the center here. It just makes it easier. I also drilled a hole here for the center peg and a hole here for the side peg and I would have done one on this peg but I broke it off when I took it apart. Don't tell anybody. Don't tell Matt. Anyway, <laughs> and then the top LED, since the board is small, the top LEDs actually go up above the top. So, anyway, so that's that. Um, I'll show you a video when I'm done with this. Alright, so the monitor is done. There's a few things I've done differently from the previous ones, and that is, if you look where these, where my wires go, and I've actually looped them through and soldered them twice, and that's Let's see here. That's just to provide some structural integrity because it's going to be under some high vibration on the bus it's going into. And the other thing I did is I took this green wire and I looped it through again, both sides. And I pulled it nice and tight. And it actually, it's just a connector on the ground, but it, it keeps these from being pulled out. Because on uh, my monitor in my bus, I've pulled these wires out several times. I only had two colors, red and green, so we're cheap. So they're all labeled. The green is the ground, and all the rest of these are labeled with individual what they do. These two in my hand are left and left amber and red loading lights. So then I figure what I can do real quick is I'll uh, we'll, we'll run a little test on this, so you can you guys can see everything working. I've got a Let's see here. Got a 9 volt battery right here. Here's my test leads. I'm going to clip the yellow lead here since it's our ground onto the ground wire. And we'll just touch these individually and you can see it all 
light up. So there's one. That's uh, left red loading lights. Left amber. Right amber. Right red. Let me move this. There we go. Left turn. Right turn. Brake. Tail. Let's try that again. There we go. And uh, last but not least, our white reverse lights. Nice and bright. So all I'm doing is just touching this to individual wires. So that's left amber loading lights. So it's pretty cool. So that's all it is to it. So this thing is all set to go. Um, this was a used monitor board case. That's why it's kind of why the corners are dog-eared. Um, what you can do to alleviate that problem is just put a washer around your mounting screws. A real nice looking washer and that'll cover up the fact that the corners are dog-eared. Or just use a good good sized pan head screw. Uh, let's see, these are number 8 by 3 quarter inch. These might actually work good. Yeah, these wouldn't look too bad. You'd still see. You'd want a bigger washer than that. But anyway, so there you go. And uh, hope you enjoyed the little video. We've got the monitor all screwed back together. One thing I did from the last segment of the video is uh, I relocated. If you see right down here, let me get this. I don't have my LEDs out. Let's see here. There we go. Use this red wire to point. So this right here, where you see the trace is pulled off, that's where the the one of the amber loading light sections, uh, the two resistors came together, and I relocated them because I didn't want the nut here grounding out against them. So that worked out for the better. I relocated them, had to replace one, but they're just they're all in there. And then of course, like I said, all these are nice and labeled for the person whose bus they're going into. That way all he has to do is just find out which one's which and wire it up. So, and uh, that's really about it. Um, anyway, hope you guys enjoyed the, uh, the making of this and you guys can further understand uh, how this works. All this board that I made does is shows that the lights, the circuit is getting power. The other board, what it does so... This board has a positive and a negative, and then it has 28 different leads on it. Uh, the front and rear loading lights are combined. So, basically, uh, right front red and right rear red are simply right red, and so on. And so, each light has two leads going to it. The monitor is basically wired in series to it. So, one of these pegs would bring power in to light up the LED, while the other would send power out to the actual light. And provided the light is not burnt out, the LED would light up. It's wired in as a series circuit. So, if the light was burnt out on the back of the bus, then the according light on the monitor would, would not show. And that would show people. Uh, the only problem with that is with the newer buses, your brake and tail, so here's your brake, there's your tail. On the newer buses, it's a four-lamp system where all four come on for tail lights and brake lights, you know. Um, so it kind of defeated the purpose of these uh, on the newer buses uh, because if a tail light went out, you still had another one in the circuit that was lit, so the tail light would indicator would stay on. My older Elmo monitor on, on my 87 International bus, uh, when you lose a, a brake or a tail, they still show that they're lit up unless both of them on that side of the bus go out. Um, however, when I put LED turn signals on, I had to put load resistors in because the turn signals were not showing up on the Elmo monitor but on the monitor with this board in it they were because it was getting power so anyway this is this board is strictly just to you know for novelty purposes so you can have a light monitor in it without all the complex wiring it's just you know it's not 16 wires it's 
it's nine or ten wires all to it's ten wires nine wires in the ground so as opposed to you know 28 wires so it's a lot more simple to hook up and really it achieves the same thing you still see the lights come on when you activate the appropriate light on the bus so anyway thanks again for watching I hope you enjoyed it